Welcome. How are we? Excellent. Welcome. My name is Chris Parker. I'm here from Mercer Cutlery. Uh, we are the group who makes your knives. Uh, I understand that you are all new students here at Miami. So the first couple of weeks of classes, excellent, excellent, welcome. Well, we have a short presentation today. We want to talk about a couple of different things that are going on with your knife kits. Um, first of all, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the company. Mercer Cutlery has been in business for over 30 years. Uh, we produce a variety of lines of cutlery, a variety of innovative solutions as far as culinary students go. Like I said, we've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, and we actually serve about 90% of the culinary schools in the United States. So we take care of a lot of students just like yourselves, a lot of future chefs, if you will. So your sort of satisfaction with the product is very important to us. And then we also have a committed mission to make sure that you guys have the finest quality tools available for you to use uh, in your day to day. As your chefs will explain to you is once you get into classes that really your knives are going to be the most important tools you have. So having the best possible tools will give you the best chance to have uh, really a nice chance of being successful in the kitchen. Um, just give you a little bit of background about myself. Like I said, my name is Chris Parker. I work for Mercer. I've been in the restaurant business for over 10 years. Um, I am a graduate of the Midwest Culinary Institute in Cincinnati. Um, and I moved to New York about four years ago. Those last four years, I've been working in a variety of different restaurants in the city. Uh, most notably, I left a restaurant called Reset in the West Village. Uh, we had the luck of being um, presented with two different James Beard Awards. Our chef was nominated for Rising Star Chef, which is sort of like Rookie of the Year. And then we were also nominated as one of the 30 best new restaurants in the United States. So it was quite an honor for us there. And, and now I have the honor of being able to present a little bit more about what goes into your knife kits to you here. So uh, we just got our kits, right? Have we even had it? We haven't received our kits yet. All right, well, you'll see your kits soon enough, and, and I know what you have in there, so I want to present what's in there for you. This is uh, your chef knife. This is the, the Genesis, is this particular blade that we have for you to use. Um, what's really nice and cool about this knife is that it is fully forged. High carbon German stainless steel, and it's fully forged. Well, what does fully forged mean? Basically, the fully forged means that the, the, the steel, one piece of steel, runs from the tip of the blade all the way to the butt end. This is sort of the mark of a superior knife. High quality, one piece. It gives it good weight and balance, which is really important, especially as you're going to be using the knives for hours on end, all sorts of chopping and uh, different procedures with them. So having a really high quality knife is important to us. Um, what we want to do for you today is we want to talk about a couple of different things. First of all, we want to talk about how those knives of yours are made. I don't know if anybody ever really gets much thought into what goes into making a knife, but it's important. Um, then we're also going to want to talk about safe care and handling of your knife. And then the last thing that we want to do is show, sort of get you introduced to the ideas of how to keep your knife blade sharp. Now, I know that a lot of this is new to most of you, which is great, but we're really excited about giving you some information that you can use in the future. So first things first, we want to talk about how your knife is made. Um, as I said, it is high carbon German stainless steel, and this is what your knife starts out as. This is a rectangular piece of steel, um, and it's basically one heavy piece. Um, and there is a variety of processes that your knives go through so that they go from being that piece of steel into this finished product right here. First and foremost, you saw it there, that rectangular steel is cut into shape. The next process is a high heat tempering process where the blade is superheated. Um, it is then pressed from both ends. So you get this small uh, rounded piece of steel. This will eventually become the bolster of the blade, which is this piece right here. This is really critical as far as the durability, strength, and comfort of the knife begins because this is where it all sort of comes from. If you'll see, once you get your knife in your hands, they have really good balance. That's important as far as to fight fatigue and whatnot. So it's something that you can have and use really well. So that's the next stage. From there, we move into the forging stage of the knife, which is where it's beginning to sort of take the rough shape that we're going to see. So this is the next stage of it. And where it follows from there is basically the, um, the forging stamping process. So just I have both pieces so you can see is that basically we use a mechanical process where the blade is punched out. So you have what was the original rectangular blank, and now is that rough shape of your knife. From here, the blade has gone through a tempering process where it goes into a 2,500 degree oven. Um, what happens is the molecules in the steel itself will be expanding. 
This is a, sort of a, a hardening steel process. I don't know if anyone knows how the actual process of steel is made, but basically we start with iron, and we move through a series of heating and cooling processes. This gives the knife the strength that we're going to need so that it will not only hold an edge really well, but then it will be able to have a really sharp edge that you can cut and chop a lot of stuff through. Uh, after that, the knife goes through an annealing stage where it's basically slow cooked, or it's not slow cooked, it's, 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 it's cooked in a slower and less hot oven, about 600 degrees. So before, when those molecules were expanding rapidly in a very hot oven, now they have a chance to sort of solidify. And this is the final hardening process in our steel blades. Um, this gives them sort of that durability and flex. And I don't know if anyone's really thought about a knife as being flexible, but they do have a bit of give to them. It's not anything that you'll ever notice, but when you're chopping for a long time, you need a knife that's going to have a little give to it. Otherwise, it's basically like hitting a hammer on a cutting board. You're going to get wrist fatigue, your arms are going to get tired, and it's not good for an overall level of comfort. So we use that final annealing stage to develop a bit of flexibility and final edge sharpness with the knife. Um, from there, uh, is when we start beginning the sort of high-tech processes, the knives. The knives are gone through a robotic uh, process where they are ground and polished. Um, this allows us to control um, very specifically different levels of quality and standards that we want our knives to have. And then also it's able to move efficiently through the, um, through the production process. Um, from there, the knives go into an ultrasonic cleaning bath. Um, this cleans them. They get into dip into see a chemical solution, and then they're also hit with high frequency sound waves. This removes on a molecular level any of the grit and grime that might have been left uh, in the knives. From there, the handle is attached. I don't have one in that stage, but you get a general idea. Um, and that's where the hand craftsmanship comes into play with our knives that we think is really important. So the knives are all finished by hand. That is to say that there is a worker who is a high trained worker in our factory, then begins to grind the machine on the wheel, as you see up there. Um, what we also like about it a lot is they implement a little bit more technology. You see in the bottom right hand corner, that's a laser level. What we do is we put the knives into that laser level so that we can accurately determine the cutting angle that we want them to. And again, we have a stringent set of standards that we want them to follow as far as cutting angles. So that's, again, a very sharp, durable knife. Um, and then we leads us to the final product here. So, so now we see, we see how the knife is made, but let's talk about what's actually in that knife, what, is, what it's made out of. So the knife is high carbon stainless steel. Well, let's break that down a little bit. What, is, what does that mean? So high carbon knives have a content, a carbon content of 5% of or greater. What this does is it gives it that, that strength and durability. That's that, that edge that's going to that's gonna stay for a while as, as you're using it. It's not going to immediately go dull. Um, and then also important with that, that sharpness is that it, it will be able to be sharpened well. Um, so once the edge just sort of goes away a little bit, you'll be able to, to bring the edge back to it. The other half of that is stainless steel. Uh, that means that it has basically a 14 to 15% chromium content. Chromium is another element, if you're aware of it. For anyone who has a, a you know, chrome bumper on their car, it's the same idea. What, what it does is it basically it, it renders the, the surface of the blade chemically inert. This keeps rust and iron oxide from forming on the blade. We want to make sure that your knives last a long time, so we make sure that they're stainless as well. Again, making sure that they're well cared for is important, but really having that extra step in there makes them high-quality blades worthy of, uh, of culinary students like yourselves. Um, so now we know how the knives are made. We know what's in them. Really what's the next thing is safety of the knives. Um, as you begin your sort of culinary journey, safety is going to be something that is, dr is sort of drummed into your heads at all times, always. It's, it's the key to being successful and safe in a kitchen, uh, whether you're in school or when many of you start to go out into the field, which is, I assume, what uh, part of you're doing. Um, so safety. Let's talk about safety. Has anyone here ever worked in a kitchen before or we're all brand new? Oh, excellent. So there's a few people who know what's going on. So we do a couple of things. Number one, common sense is always most important. Just like anything in life, we don't cross the street when the light is green. We do common sense in the kitchen. So there's a few things that we like to cover. Number one, if you are passing a knife to someone, we want to make sure that we ha pass it handle first. So we always pass the knife handle first to someone. And then if we pass it back, we get it back, it's always handled back to us. Same thing. Always handle first as far as knife passing goes if you need to do it. The other thing is if you are walking around the kitchen, we want to make sure the knife, the blade is down to our side and facing behind us. Uh, this is the way, the, the, the best way to walk around the kitchen with a knife is, is that manner. Um, something that I always like to add because I learned it early on when I was in kitchen, if you are passing behind someone with a knife in your hand, I always like to say behind sharp. 
sharp behind, this general idea so that when someone knows that there's someone with a knife behind you, this is another sort of aspect as far as safety goes. Um, and then the other thing is really also important, especially as you're busy working through your production kitchen, if the knife is on your station, we always want to make sure that it's clear, it's not obstructed. So if there's a knife on your station and then you also have a towel laying over it, there's another chance for disaster. Someone could reach up and grab it and cut themselves inadvertently. So when the knife is on our station, we want to make sure it's, you know, the blade's facing towards us and our towels are always clean, wrapped up, folded by to next to us. So it's a nice clean station. We always want to be working clean and unobstructed. Um, those are really sort of the basic tenets as being um, working safe in the kitchen. And then, as I said before, common sense is most important. Um, so from here, we know some basic things now. We know how our knife is made. We know what's in it. We know to how to handle it safely. Uh, let's talk about really what's going to be most important to you is keeping that knife sharp. Um, the knives will come out of the kits to you very sharp, razor sharp. That's how we want them to come out of the factory. But over time, as you use them, the knives will start to lose their edge. If I sold a knife that didn't lose its edge, it's not a knife that was worth selling to me because it's not something that you have control over. If knives didn't get sharp, that means they're too hard. What we want is something that's going to be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more durable, and it will lose its edge. It's just the nature of the beast. So how do we take, put an edge back onto our knives? Well, there's a couple of different things we can do. First of all, this will be either this item or this item will be in your kit. This is what's called a sharpening steel. What it does is it basically will hone the edge of your knife. So I have a picture up there on the screen, if you can see it. That's a portrait of what a dull knife looks like. Ideally, and with a sharp knife, you really can't see the edge of the blade. It goes down to the point where it's such a fine tip that it goes smaller than your eyesight, um, than your eyes will allow. So as your knife gets dull, what happens is that very fine edge will eventually roll over. It'll develop sort of a rolled edge, and then also peaks and valleys will form the knife. This is, again, just a natural process as you're cutting into the board or you're cutting through vegetables and the like. Uh, this happens. So how do we bring an edge back to that knife? Well, again, we have the steel in our kits. How the steel works is basically we're going to be aligning the edge of the blade along the steel. So we can do it any number of ways. Your, your chefs will tell you different ways to do it, and you'll eventually find a way that's comfortable for you. I find for early students that, being, that doing it facing down the steel on the blade and then sh shaving away from yourself is the safest way until you get a little bit more comfortable with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, the blade towards the heel, the bolster of the knife, if you will. And then at a 20 degree angle, which is about 90, 45, and then halfway down again is 22. So remember 90, halfway down, and then halfway down again is about the right angle we want to go for. We just want to draw the blade with fairly light pressure, as in the pressure of sort of pushing open a screen door, if you will, uh, down the length of the blade in a nice smooth motion, making sure that we hit the entire edge of the knife. So from, bol from the bolster all the way to the tip, we want to make sure we do it in a nice smooth motion, just like that. Again, we also want to do even strokes, and we want to do it on both sides of the knives. So that's how we're going to put the basically the basic stealing on it. And that's, that's something that you're going to want to be doing throughout the day as you're using knives. If you start to feel them get a little bit dull, stealing will help bring the edge back on them. But eventually, no amount of stealing will get your knives sharp. That's where we have a couple of other items here with us today that are going to show us how to really truly sh put an edge back on our knives. So these are um, a couple of different kinds of sharpeners. Uh, this is the Norton Tristone. This is the most common one I find in most of our culinary schools. This is in your classrooms. This is from your school. Basically, it is a three-sided sharpening stone. Um, and there are three different courses on there. So this is a sort of coarser side. This is a medium grit. It's a little bit more dense. And then there's also a fine grit, which is very fine. It helps put a finishing edge on it. Um, another more co also common kind, this is, a, uh, this is a, a, the same brand, Norton. They make an, it's called an Arkansas whetstone. This is a double-sided sharpening stone. These are good for home use. Um, so if anyone's interested in getting out and going through their own whetstone, I recommend these guys. Um, you can find them at most uh, local sort of culinary or restaurant supply places. And then as you start of getting to the world of cooking and you encounter some of your colleagues who start using Japanese knives, you'll probably run into this. This is a Japanese water stone. Um, these are designed more for use with Japanese steel. I don't know if anyone's familiar. Basically, the difference between German and Japanese steel is that Japanese steel tends to be harder. The blades tend to be thinner, and they also, seem to be, they also tend to be one-sided. The application for most Japanese blades is, is basically fine knife work and the cutting of raw fish. I know we probably all enjoy sushi once in a while, and that sort of really, um, really um, 
you know, precise knife work is what the Japanese crave in their knives, so they do their things a little bit different. So with the Japanese water stones, um, whereas these use oil as usually the normal lubricant, which I have here, again, this is from your school, though you can just use regular water for these. Um, so sort of depending on your level of, of, of comfort and whatnot, this is sort of a progression is what I would move through as you get more comfortable with it, but it's totally up to you. But while you're in school, the Norton Tri-Stone is an absolute great piece of equipment to have to get your knife sharp. So let's talk about the procedure of sharpening a knife. Now, I know you guys are brand new to it, so it's uh, all fresh to you, but I, al I always like to illustrate this as something that I had when I was in school. So I had these knives when I was in school, and I really liked them. But as I sort of got my first job, they, they, they suggested I go out and get a different chef knife. So I got this is the first knife that I bought out of culinary school, and I was really excited about sharpening it. They were really important. Keep your knife sharp always. So I was sharpening it once a week. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. So eventually, this is what I did to it. And you guys can come and see it on your way out. Basically, I sharpened it to the point with bad technique where there's now a gap between the there's a gap between the bottom of the blade and any of the surfaces that I'm on. So it, it basically doesn't cut. This knife is, is worthless now. It's, it's no good. I don't know if you can see it on the computer there. Yeah, so you can see, kind of see that gap there. It's no good. And this is, this is bad technique. So I learned a lesson early why really good technique with sharpening is critical because this is a knife that could have lasted for years. Instead, I ruined it in six months. So I kind of took it upon myself to really learn and learn what the right way to do things. And then I have the opportunity with Mercer to be able to come and show you students as well how we do it. All right, so we have our sharpening stone. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the medium grade coarseness. I've found that for most of the knife kits that you use, you, staying with the medium and the fine is enough, unless there's any really major damage to the blade. Avoid the coarseness, because what we're doing when they're sharpening stones is we are grinding it. So we are taking a bit of the metal off. But with the, the medium and the fine grits, that's, it's fine. But when you start getting into the coarse one, you're taking more of the knife off than you necessarily need to, like I said, unless it's damaged. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour a little bit of oil onto the, onto the stone. And with one fluid motion, very similarly to I did with the sharpening steel, we're basically going to start with the tip of our knife here in this corner, and we want to finish with the bolster here at the top. So we want to use the full length of the steel, or the stone, pardon me, and we also want to do the full length of the knife. So plenty of oil is always good for this sort of thing. Make sure that it's well lubricated. Just apply it all over. So now we have a well lubricated stone. Again, we're going to start with that, that 20 degrees, which is critical, so we have a proper edge on it. So we start at 90 degrees, halfway down to 45, and then another halfway down to 20 degrees. Uh, a good little rule that I like to do for most people is if you take the tip of your pinky and you can sort of slide it underneath there, that's about the right size, depending on the size of your pinky, of course. But that 20 degrees is what we're shooting for. So then we're going to start with our tip here. We're going to move on through in one fluid motion, finishing here. So what we're doing is we're utilizing the full length of the, the sharpening stone to sharpen the full length of the knife. Um, this is good because in the lifetime of the sharpening stones and also knife, we're, we're basically effectively using both, which is good for wear purposes. So I've been sharpening this knife a lot the last couple of days. I've been doing a lot of demos. So I'm only going to do it a couple of times. But ideally for you students, when you're sharpening it, especially if you feel it's really dull, between 8 and 10 strokes is fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. So again, tip of the knife in one of the corners, and then finishing with the, the bolster here in this corner. So 20 degrees, nice smooth motion. And that is, that is the best way to do it. And I don't know if you can hear, I'll get a little closer. You can sort of hear that really satisfying uh, sound as it moves across there cleanly. So we are now on the medium side, which is good. And then we want to finish up sharpening our knives. We want to use the coarse side. The idea is that basically we're, uh, we're, we're al aligning those, those molecules. And, and before, we got sort of a, a rough place. But now we really want to get it real, real hard. Um, what we're doing is we're pushing. Basically, the stone is pushing back on the knife with equal amount of force. So the denser and harder the stone, the harder it pushes back on the knife, and it really gets those things into a really razor edge, which is what we want and what you should want. Because as you may know, for those of you who have those dull, crummy kitchen knives at home, when you're trying to chop an onion with a really, you know, with a really dull knife, you're forcing your way in there, and there's a good chance you can cut yourself. We don't want you to do that in culinary school because it's going to slow you down, and you'll probably lose some points. <laughs> 
So, same procedure, tip of the blade here in the corner, we're going to finish here. And again, between six and eight, eight and ten strokes on each side is all you need to do. I'm not going to do that many because, like I said, this knife is pretty sharp as it is. Switch side. Always make sure we're doing that 20 degree angle. That was the, that's the hardest thing I really think is, is getting used to doing that, that, that same angle consistently every time. And it takes a lot of practice. But um, your chef instructors, I'm sure, are well qualified to show you how to do it. So if you're interested in it, absolutely ask them about it and they will, they will get you into it. Um, but it's really it's an important skill to use now and especially once you start getting into uh, work cooking full time. Um, so now the knife is effectively sharpened. The last thing I like to do on it is hit it a couple of times across the steel. Again, we make sure you use good technique. 20 degrees the same. Five or six times on this one. Five or six times on that side. And then we have a knife that should be able to cut ribbons. So if done properly, a really nice sharp knife. We'll get a good, nice good cut here. Something that basically can cut, you know, super thin knife slices is what we want, especially as the knife skill classes. You'll get into all of that, but the knife skills are really important, and having a really good sharp knife will, will help make your life easy now and also in the future. So I want to bring it all together and talk about a couple of other things. So we now know what's in the knife, how it's made, how to be safe with it, and how to sharpen it. The last thing is when we're done washing and storing. Um, these knives do not go in the dish tank. For obvious safety reasons, if someone person, some person puts it in the dish tank and then someone gets it out and actually cuts themselves, again, a chance to lose points and it's safety things we're worried about. So our knives are always hand washed. Warm soapy water is just fine for them. Um, and they're also hand dry with a towel. Uh, and then what I recommend for you going out and purchasing almost right away is to go to a local you know, restaurant supply store and get a couple of these plastic guards. They're very inexpensive, just a couple of dollars, and they fit right over the edge of the knife. So your knives are fully protected against any sort of uh, breakage or droppage or loss. Um, and then you can also know that you'll never, you'll never accidentally cut yourself with them at all. This is uh, just a, a, like a sort of a mineral-based honing oil. Um, this is available in the classrooms. This is where I got this. So you should find both the stones and then the oil uh, near each other. If you don't have access to it, um, basically any, any, any vegetable-based, um, you know, it, it usually says like, um, you know, safe, it's like a nert or like a, a vegetable-based oil. Um, usually this is what I would use. See, this says it meets or exceeds requirements for U U.S. Food and Drug Administration regulations. So uh, like a honing oil, um, something non-toxic is key. Vegetable-based non-toxic oils is what we want to use. Um, and then for these stones here at school, um, obviously no olive oil. Nothing like that has a flavor or that can soak in these stones because these stones are porous. So I would stick to the honing oil that you have here. At home, if you want to sharpen at home, again, a food safe or a non-toxic oil is fine. If, if you can't find that, a canola oil or something you know, non-flavored will do the trick for you. But these aren't usually hard to find as far as a, a safe uh, thing goes. Um, what I find usually is that most of the tristones that are in schools, people have already used oil before. So if it's a brand new stone, you can use water if you want, but I tend to stick with what's already been applied to the stone. Like I said, they're porous, so they'll absorb whatever is applied to them first, and as we know, oil and water don't mix. So I find for lifetime performance to stick to whatever kind of lubricant was used before, and in most of the schools that I visit, they use the oil for these, these sort of Norton-style stones. It is difficult to sharpen a serrated blade. Um, it is something that if you are finding it gets dull, you may want to look into having a professional sharpen it. Um, I don't know if the school has any electric sharpeners here. That's one way of doing it. The problem with the serrated is if you know you have a bread knife at home and it has sort of that wavy saw cut to it, it's difficult to get to the inside of that to sharpen it. Not that you should necessarily do it, but I have seen in, in, on the professional lines guys who are using steels on it. But that tends to wear down the teeth. So uh, having had a Mercer bread knife, it's actually a really great bread knife. I like it a lot. It holds its edge for a long time. So it's hopefully not something you're going to have to worry about it too early, especially if you're just cutting bread with it. Uh, it tends to hold its edge really well for a long time.
I, I, I find that really electric sharpeners are good for home use only. You guys are sort of in the last fields where hand craftsmanship and skill is really important. Um, so while technology is good for some things, being able to do things by hand, I think, is more important. So I think that sharpening knives by hand is kind of a lost art, and it's something that you should be skilled in because then you can control how your sharpen the sharpness of your blade goes. Also, those electric sharpeners tend to take a lot off of the blade, so as you use them, you're actually shortening the knife the lifetime of your blade. So I personally don't recommend using them. Um, if you're really interested in sharpening knives by hand, get in there, get a stone, get comfortable with it. Um, like I said, the biggest thing is getting the technique down. So I find the best way to practice with it is to, to use something like, like, you know, like this box is great or something that's a little bit elevated off the thing and then practice your stroke, the motion of it and have your chef help you, of course, because once you're comfortable with that motion, then it's really easy to sharpen your blade. So I would say, as a professional, don't use electric sharpeners. They're really just going to shorten the lifetime uh, of your blade. Um, the, the diamond stones, I've personally never worked with, but I find that anything that is extra abrasive that tends to shorten the life of the, the knife is something that I'm not necessarily for. What you can purchase if you're interested, this is a diamond coated steel. So this steel actually has a fine diamond powder on it. Um, it's a little bit better for your basic honing things, uh, uses go. So this is something you can get good on your uh, knife kit. Ah, that's a great question. How often do you need to sharpen your knives? You need to sharpen your knives when they're starting to get dull. So it's not necessarily a time thing, it's more of a use thing. So if you had a day where you were chopping mirepoix all afternoon for a bunch of different stocks and whatnot, you might find that your knife's dull. Uh, if you end up you know, cutting through a lot of real thick fibrous vegetables, your knife is getting dull. So it's not necessarily a time thing, it's not a regular thing. It's, it's more about how often you're using the knives, what you're cutting. So when you're cutting through harder things, then you'll find that your knife is going to get dull sooner. Um, at first, really, I would, I would, for the first couple of weeks of class, the steel is going to be just fine for you. And then as you guys are getting comfortable and you can sort of tell the difference between when your knife is getting sharp and dull, you'll know when it's time. And that really is one of those things about knives that's really neat is it's a personal thing for a lot of people is, is sort of your taste and the way you want it. And just like we offer lots of different kinds of knives, there's obviously lots of different tastes uh, as far as sharpness and things go. So when your knife is not performing the way that you want it to, it's time to sharpen it. Uh, an excellent, another good question. I'm glad that we have time for us today, and I'm, I hope that we're not running too long. So I always like to bring this one along to sort of show the difference. This is a fillet knife. You'll be using this to break down uh, poultry and different cuts of meat uh, in, your, in the kitchen. So the technique in that 20-degree that angle is the same, but how you hold and maneuver the knife on the block is different. So if you want to keep the idea in your head is that as you're sharpening the knife, you basically want to apply the same amount of force the same angle to the full length of the blade. So if you wanted to sharpen your fillet knife, we do it a little bit different. We'll keep the, the tip down just like before, and what we'll do is we're going to have to basically curve the knife a little bit more to make sure we hit the full length of it. So I'll just give you a couple of demonstration strokes so you can get the idea. Basically, that 20 degree angle is, is critical right here. It's tough to tell at that end, but that 20 degree angle is critical. And then just one basically fluid motion. So starting here at the tip, and the exact same, the exact same motion, an angle of attack is, is, is what's, what's the key there. So yes and no. Yes, the technique is the same as long as we apply the 20 degrees and making sure we're using the full length of the blade sharpening. But other than that, you may need to sort of maneuver it a little bit differently on the stone itself. Well, it was certainly my pleasure to be here. Um, I uh, got a little tour of your facilities. You guys are in a really good place. Uh, I met your chef director, who's an excellent guy. So you guys, uh, I think you're really lucky to be sort of culinary students in a really forward-thinking school that, that's really going to make you guys really great chefs for the future. So it was my pleasure being here with you guys today. Thank you very much. This program is brought to you by Miami Culinary Institute at Miami-Dade College. For more information about the schools and the culinarium program, please visit www.miamidadeculinary.com or call 305-237-3276.